Hello, this is just a quick thing. This is a bit of a test uh, of a different camera that I've borrowed. I've borrowed a Canon PowerShot G15. I'm also trying to record sound on my zoom recorder just put up on the shelf. Um, while the sun's out, and the sun's really good in the kitchen, and I've got something interesting on the bench, I thought I'd make a quick video about it. This is a Sanyo VTC 5000 Mark II Betamax VCR from 1982. I picked this up about a couple of years ago uh, from a chap in Bolton. I had to go all the way to Bolton to go and get a, a Betamax VCR um, because for some reason I really wanted a Betamax VCR and uh, that was the closest one that I could find that wasn't either extortionate postage from London or uh, just wasn't miles away to go and get it. So. Uh, we drove all the way to Bolton and back to get this thing. Um, this is on my bench because I've done a uh, repair, a mechanical repair, on uh, an idler wheel underneath here. Uh, a new rubber tyre has been fitted uh, to an idler wheel which friction drives the uh, spools. Uh, without that you get no drive on the spools and it eats tapes basically. I'd like to say thanks to Kevin Lambert for supplying me with uh, a couple of uh, idler wheels, I took one as a spare, uh, idler tyres should I say. Uh, I believe Kevin actually worked for Sanyo uh, in the early to mid 80s when uh, these were on the market and uh, we had a little chat about uh, these uh, machines and he told me that these had about 15% of the market share in the UK at the time. It was the best selling VCR I believe of 1983 and it isn't a VHS. Uh, there's lots of, uh, of course, videos and media on the internet about the quote-unquote format war uh, of the early to mid-80s and it's generally presented from uh, a very American perspective. Um, in the UK things were a little bit different, we didn't really have the issue of um, tape length so much uh, with Betamax. By the time it had come to our shores um, it was a pretty even playing field. Um, the average uh, VHS tape was three hours or four hours. Uh, L750 Betamax tapes were three hours, 15 minutes. You find most commonly that most used Betamax tapes from the era, from the era uh, have got uh, two films taped on them. So even including TV ad breaks, you could comfortably get two movies on a, v on a, on a Betamax tape. Sorry, and um, that's what most VCR owners of the time seemed to use them for. Now, what I want to talk about on this is. Um, what a fantastic piece of engineering this was in terms of uh, scaling down complexity, reducing weight, reducing cost and being able to get this onto the market at a price point uh, that made it the first uh, quote unquote a mass market VCR and this was the first to I believe come under the £400 um, price point which is about equivalent to about £1000 I believe in today's money and unlike a lot of things uh, you find today, um, it wasn't done by snide copies of circuits or um, building something badly, making something out of crap. Um, nothing like that happened at all. It was through sheer genius of engineering and a lack of outsourcing. Because Sanyo were predominantly a, uh, a component company uh, in Japan, this is made with a lot of Sanyo components. All the capacitors, uh, well all the ones that haven't changed because the power supply and servo board have been completely recapped. But all the original capacitors are Sanyo. The giant STK voltage regulator on the side, I'll include a picture of, is a Sanyo chip. I believe some of the microcontroller circuitry is Sanyo chips. So not only have they got, of course, their own chip fab, their own uh, component factory, uh, but of course they're not having to pay anyone else uh, to get components, uh, you know, at a high cost. Another thing on this is uh, much of the casing, the chassis, is uh, is plastic moulded. So there's a uh, there's a huge reduction in the amount of metal that's in this, which makes it weigh approximately. Um, half to two thirds of the equivalent Sony at the time. Now Sony were the absolute kings of using 25 materials to make one part to do one job. Um, and so you find that every Sony machine uh, of the era, if you have it now, uh, is always plagued with mechanical and electronic problems that are a nightmare to solve. This thing, apart from changing rubber parts, still works, and some of the capacitors of course, still works fantastically. 
Uh, it's an absolute joy to work on. All the circuit boards we've got um, power supply split into two parts, TV tuner board, uh, which obviously in today's um, broadcast market I don't really use anymore, um, servo board. The main board underneath is uh, the video amp and uh, this board is uh, the microcontroller, the logic controller essentially uh, for operating the unit. Um, probably just out of shot right at the back we've got a, uh, a video amp for the uh, directly coming off the head and um, this is a fairly standard two head machine the 5150 model that followed it uh, added two more heads for colour picture search, fast picture search um, so this one just has a black and white picture search the top loading mechanism is an absolute joy to use because it's so fast unlike uh, VCRs of the 90s, VHS VCRs that used to frustrate me no end that tapes would either get jammed in the front loading mechanism or just take ages to come out this is instant and the threading mechanism is brilliant again doing away with excess solenoids and motors and metal parts this loading ring drives the entire threading assembly uh, the entire threading process it's driven by one motor on one belt. There are no uh, mechanical arms driven by solenoids or anything. Look how fast this is to thread up. We're in. And unlike a lot of Betamax VCRs of the era, if we stop it, it unthreads the tape. So fast winding, which works really well now I've changed the idler tire, is really quick and if you need to get the tape out it's unthreaded there's no delays so fast now if anyone's got one of these there are lots of videos on these uh, this series a couple of things to bear in mind um, if you've dug one of these out of your loft that's not been plugged in for 30 odd years don't put a tape straight in it the reason being there's a belt uh, under here and a rubber idler tire that if you dig one of these out of the loft they're probably broken they were kind of the Achilles heel of this series and there's a loading belt as well uh, under here if this belt is broken and the idler tire uh, isn't making good contact there'll be no drive on the spools at all so you'll have threading issues there's a slight bug in the uh, control logic where if I trick this into thinking there's a tape in by Pushing, pushing this switch. If this take-up hub is not spinning, if there's no drive from the motor, watch what happens if I put it in rewind. So it threads the tape and then goes into panic, goes into shutdown. So if this is making bad contact or the belt's missing, you won't be able to wind that tape back in when you press stop. and it threads it back up. Notice this is going like the clappers because it's all been, uh, it's had a new belt and new tyre so this works fine. But if that belt is broken or the idler tyre is faulty, that's not going to work. So your tape will get stuck, it'll get completely jammed in the mechanism. So the best thing to do is pop off the cover, pop off the piece of shielding that's at the top here that I've removed to show this. Put your finger over the little slot on the side of the carriage there and that will trick it to thinking it's in a there's a tape in. So you can test all the modes, you can use a, a piece of uh, just plain white paper soaked in a bit of alcohol to clean the heads and you can check that there's plenty of torque in all the modes and that the threading assembly is all working fine. So I've got loads of torque now on the fast forward and if I have to keep spinning this to keep the sensor happy plenty on the rewind as well so you'll most likely have to change this tyre uh, and this belt uh, before you can go on I've had to completely recap the power supply and the servo board because obviously a VCR spends all its time on and um, that's probably spent 20 years switched on next to a TV in someone's living room um, and I had problems with servo lockup on mine when I got it now it's been recapped it locks up great 
and um, I found some really interesting tapes. I've got original Live Aid recordings. Um, I've got um, footage from the opening week of Channel 4. I've got an entire tape of the Woodstock film that was broadcast the opening week of Channel 4. And I've used it a lot in some of my video art experiments that are further down this channel uh, a couple of years ago. And it's just an absolute joy to use. Still works great. It's a testament to brilliant engineering. Um, just loads of fun to play with. All the boards are really easily removable. Uh, really easy to clean and maintain. And just a great example of great engineering with lack of outsourcing. Because outsourcing is something that estate agents do to rip people off. It's not something that good companies do with brilliant engineering to get something down to a, a cost, uh, you know, a good cost point uh, where they can get it to mass market. So that's all I want to say really. If you've got one, don't jam a tape in it first of all. Check the uh, rubber parts, check the torque of the idler wheels uh, and the uh, spools. If you're completely happy, give it a clean, put a tape in it, plug a monitor in. It'll probably work. Cheers.